Welcome back to AP World Simplified, and today we'll be discussing a relatively difficult topic in the enclosure movement and commercialization process taking place in Western Europe in the early modern era. Commercialization is actually when one pursues a particular interest, career, makes a product, or provides a service, and they're doing that for a profit. And you may be thinking to yourself, but duh, isn't that what people have always done? And the answer to that is actually no. Uh, most people had not done that throughout most of history, particularly in Western Europe. Prior to the early modern and modern eras, people in Europe and most of the rest of the world uh, used a system uh, of rent known as common land, uh, particularly in Western Europe when you had a series of laws referred to as common land laws that actually provided protections for peasants on that land. The way that it worked was whether you were a lord who was renting from a king or a peasant renting from a lord, you did not actually own the property that from which you lived on or farmed. It was actually owned theoretically by the king or at least by the lord who was renting it from the king and you had to work that area essentially to provide sustenance for yourself. Whatever the sustenance level was, roughly speaking, any excess grain would go to the lord or to the king as uh, a form of tax. This made it quite difficult because any efforts to improve or innovate and create more grain or agriculture uh, were sort of pushed under the rug because people are not able to actually benefit directly from that as the uh, excess grains uh, or toils of their labor actually go to other people. In fact, when taxes would increase in these areas, and it would come in the form of grain, one had to either give a greater portion of what they kept for themselves, their sustenance levels, or work extra hard to give all of the uh, extra fruits of their labor uh, to the Lord or the King in that area. First place to institutionally challenge these ideals of common law land and rent payments to the lords and kings would actually come from England in the uh, 16th century, roughly speaking, uh, with a movement called the enclosure movement, which is literally the enclosing of land and the commercializing of that land uh, for individual profit and gain. Now, one of the reasons England was able to pull this off was it had already had a history of challenging and limiting monarchical power, beginning in 1215 with the Magna Carta um, and other struggles and documents leading up to the 17th century. Uh, English Parliament under the House of Lords, which was made mostly of nobles, and the House of Commons, which is made up of, of rich non-noble uh, people and property owners, they had uh, slowly chipped away at the uh, extreme limitations and powers of the monarch and granted some protections and limitations um, uh, to themselves. Now, as England and also the Netherlands are going to start developing this concept of private property, that is, you purchase a segment of property and you then own that. The king does not own that, the lord does not own that. So if you farm that to its maximum efficiency, any excess grain or profits would be given directly to you and not all to the lord or the king. Now, there would still be taxes, of course, you would have to pay um, as part of the state. However, the system was different in that if you were particularly innovative or productive, you reaped most of the benefits of that profit. That is what commercialization is. And commercialization, as I said before, didn't really exist, at least not in terms of property and agriculture uh, in the world, till this enclosure movement. As the noble and non-noble landowners in England and later on the rest of Western Europe uh, began to uh, commercialize and close off their land, they also began to sort of remove or kick off the uh, excess peasants that remained there. Now these peasants did have previously common land protections in that they had the right to live and uh, live off of the land from which many of their ancestors had uh, worked in the centuries previous. However, once this enclosure movement began and uh, private owners began taking over uh, the land, whether they were noble or non-noble, they began to remove any sort of workers that were not necessary uh, or any people that were misusing the land. In other words, they wanted to use all of the land or as much of the land as possible for producing um, lucrative, profitable agriculture. And peasants that were not using the land correctly uh, or were not farming it or were hunting or destroying it uh, or allowing their cattle to graze and destroy crops uh, were not desired or permitted by these commercialized uh, private landowners. As a result of this growing movement of people uh, being removed from the common land from which they felt they and did have a legal right to, we saw some uprisings and peasant rebellions in Europe, uh, such as Ketz Rebellion in the 16th century of England. However, these movements were largely uh, ineffective and that allowed these landowners in England and the rest of Western Europe uh, to gradually expand their property more and more with the profits they were reaping from their commercialized uh, agriculture. Many of the peasants that were removed from this enclosure movement had to go to the cities uh, from which they had uh, no experience um, and would function somewhat um, in a 
state of dismay and array as they, uh, again, did not have the skills usually uh, to function in the city, which sort of caused uh, high crime rates in the city as people still needed to survive. Um, a large uh, epidemic of overpopulation and disease because the cities do not have the infrastructure for this. And this general movement of people from the country uh, to the cities starting in the 16th and 17th centuries in Europe is also known as urbanization. And while it would be a problem at first, and it would take some time for state and local governments to adjust to this influx of population, it would provide a large and ready uh, untrained or unskilled labor force uh, for the coming industrial re revolution in the modern era. Now, while the plight of these peasants being removed from their homes, of course, is a notable uh, negative aspect of the enclosure movement, overall, the effects of commercialization across time are a, certainly a net gain, as this allowed people to, for the first time, pursue their own interests. That is, if they enjoyed farming or were good at farming, they could potentially farm their land to maximal efficiency, make a profit, purchase more land, grow and grow grow, thus benefiting themselves, their families, and by using this land more effectively and creating more food, they would uh, create a greater supply of food that could help provide for the needs of some of these displaced peasants and others. And also a greater amount of food is going to lead to a lower price uh, in food in general, as the increase in supply and um, across the board and consumption are going to result in a, an interplay of the market forces of supply and demand. Now those market forces um, and the theories behind them have not yet been codified or articulated as they will be by Adam Smith in uh, 1776 in his book, uh, The Wealth of Nations. But these uh, early concepts of commercialization um, and profiting to produce and benefit not only yourself but others are going to start taking root here in Europe uh, in the early modern era. Now whether individuals were motivated by personal profit or helping others or likely both, Europe is going to see a large series of or, or rapid growth uh, as far as economic production goes. Now that's going to be a combination of course of the exploits of exploration and the resources gathered from there, but also the commercialization process contributes as much if not more uh, to that econo economic growth over time. With individuals pursuing their own interests and able to profit from those interests, that's going to lead to uh, a whole different set of, or a whole different mindset when it comes to the economy. Uh, people are going to be encouraged to pursue innovation, finding better ways to produce, uh, to increase their own profits, and uh, provide more for others um, directly or indirectly. And that's going to lead to um, the expansion also of the financial institutions in Western Europe, uh, such as an advanced banking system to provide loans for potential uh, purchasers of land uh, or ones that need to buy more equipment or hire more workers uh, or invest in exploration. And the banking system starting in England and the Netherlands and the rest of Western Europe uh, are going to expand substantially and become more stable. One such example in the 16th and 17th century in England is going to be the Bank of England that is not only going to deal with individuals um, and their uh, loans and purchases and investments, but it's also going to manage the actual budget of the state of England, which is going to provide a lot more economic stability and reliability with that banking system. Additionally, venture capitalists are going to get a good chance to uh, benefit from exploration and the commercialization of agriculture in Europe as their individual wealth and their investments in other individuals who they feel are innovative or hardworking or, or on the rise will allow not only the opportunity for those people to start their businesses um, or purchase land, but also would pay off for those investors if that person was successful. All of these things put together, the commercialization, the uh, benefits and um, profits from exploration, the advanced uh, banking systems and financial systems such as uh, uh, the Bank of England and venture capitalists, all of these things are contribute to a, an explosion of economic growth uh, starting here in early modern Europe, but really taking off uh, when the Industrial Revolution comes uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries. Additionally, this process of commercialization is going to spur further exploration, not only with venture capitalists uh, investing in joint stocks to um, potentially profit from exploration, but also in the start of private companies known as charter companies, which helped and aided in uh, England and the Netherlands settling and establishing colonies across the world. One such example would be the British East India Company, or for the Dutch, the British or the Dutch East Indies Company, in which the company would apply for a charter or a sort of agreement uh, from the crown, the government, that they would function temporarily until the colony was fully settled and established, 
uh, as a mini government, uh, essentially. They would have access to their own mercenary soldiers and the support of the Royal Navy. They would also be the ones that would negotiate with the local rulers. They could also uh, sell and distribute land to individuals. And they were also in charge of enforcing the mother country's laws um, and maybe even making their own in that area. Again, that was just for a, a specified period of time, and once that area what had been established and consolidated, the uh, state governments would then take over, uh, like they did in India in 1857 at the British Raj, and in the uh, Indonesia, uh, as the Dutch government took over in 1800. Now, be it charter companies, exploration, um, venture capitalists, or commercialized agriculture, all of these different possibilities are going to allow uh, individuals, uh, mostly non-noble, the chance to enrich themselves. And this growing class of people, whether they be uh, lucky or competent or smart or hardworking, are going to be part of a new class that becomes as rich or even in some cases richer and more powerful than the established uh, noble and royal families. This new class, starting in England anyway, is going to be referred to as the gentry. And again, that just is a person who is somewhat self-made and wealthy and powerful, and they are, of course, of non-noble or non-royal birth. Um, other movements uh, will be called, this will be referred to as the middle class in Western Europe, uh, or the bourgeoisie uh, in French, and this class is going to begin to, especially in the modern era, uh, clash with the nobles uh, and the royal families uh, for political control and also expansion of their own rights of life, liberty, and property. However, that's a topic we will talk about in the modern era in period five with the Enlightenment. That concludes this episode of AP World Simplified, and hopefully this has helped um, sort of demystify a very complex topic uh, and an important one that led to the rise of the economies and militaries and innovations of Western Europe going up forward from the early modern era to the modern era. And don't forget, if you want access to more uh, videos or resources for AP students or teachers for AP World, uh, feel free to check out my website at morganapteaching.com. Thanks for watching.